Okay, just hit it with the power washer. Um, the brake fluid had only been on there about maybe an hour, hour and a half. I should have left it a lot longer than that because even your commercial paint strippers or whatever, I mean, that's meant to strip paint, they say like four hours. But uh, most of the paint was bubbling up. So, I mean, I went on ahead and hit it. I should have waited because, as you can see, a lot didn't come off. Uh, for some reason, where the black paint was at, it came off. I think the black paint reacted with the other paints that was underneath it when they painted. Because, I mean, there's some places where I'm noticing that it's four and five layers of paint just because he painted the entire thing blue. And then he'd go over, he'd paint like a tree, and the tree might have five or six different colors in it, and it was all just layer upon layer upon layer, and then he might put a building in front of that, and so, yeah, it is thick. Uh, this back corner right here, it pretty much every bit came off of this. I mean, there's a few little scragglers, but I mean, another coat. I think what I'd probably do is spray it down before I go to work, leave it on here all day. I think then it, it'll come right off. You can see where it was running down and thicker in areas and wherever it was thicker at, where it was just running down, that, that's where it came off the best at. Because I've heard of people using this before to remove paint, and they said they mixed it with other stuff to make it thicker so that it wouldn't dry up and so that it would stay there longer. And uh, I guess maybe that's what I need to figure out to do. Mix it with something a little thicker to make it more like a paste. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this area right here because I mean, I power washed the hell out of this. Yesterday, won't nothing else coming off with the power washer, and I mean that came off like a breeze. Um, that only stayed on this part right here for maybe like 15 minutes. That's the reason why really nothing came off of there except for there was a lot around this tail light, and it came off. I'm hoping I can polish these out, but I'm pretty sure there's somebody making them. I wanted to use the original, but you can see a lot of these are missing. And they're cracked all the hell and they're all loose as crap. But I definitely want to go back with as much as the original as possible. This was the side that I really didn't think was going to come off at all. But again, you can see where it was thicker at. And it came off into thick areas. You can see it running down. But yeah, another coat on this. Let it sit all day. And I went on ahead and started power washing on down to get this ready to put coats on down here. And pretty much everything you're seeing here, it had already started coming off here. The power washer really isn't bringing anything off substantially. It's um, This side here wasn't really exposed to the sun. This side right here, there was a fence right in here to where it got no sunlight at all. So I think that's the reason why this side's being such a pain in the ass to get off. And the other side's coming off so much easier because it was exposed to the sun. Not a lot of sun, mind you, because there was trees all in the yard where this was at and where this mural was painted on it. Now mind you, I don't know if it was blue beforehand and then they painted the mural or if the guy painted it blue and then painted the mural on it um if anybody knows anything about where i can get like these stickers at this one right here is a florida sticker i don't care nothing about that i'm not in florida we're in north carolina this one here i have seen these kind of stickers on um pictures that i pulled up of like vintage uh airstreams and i'm not really why sure why you would have a picture of two people dancing and it looks like fred from scooby-doo because he's wearing an ascot and i don't know 
Seems weird. Well, it being a 63 model, I guess somebody might would have wore something like that back then. Um, there's another one back here on the back. I can't wait to try to get that monstrosity off the roof up there. Oof. Yeah, that will definitely be a thing for the gantry to lift that off because I do want to get it off in one piece. I've seen quite a few people just dump them off because if it works, I mean, even if I got to replace the compressor and all in it, no, I'm not going to reuse it. But, I mean, I could probably make that a much more efficient unit and sell it to somebody that does want an all-original unit. Um, here's the other one. Right here. So, not sure what's up with that. Um, if you know, please let me know. And, um... And let me know where I could get them at, because I, I, I want to go back as original as possible with this. I'm not sure, I don't know if I talked about this before. Of course it didn't come with this thing hanging out the window. And, of course, they plexiglass, and they thought that would be a good idea. Yay! Um, why there's two windows, one over top of the other like that right here? And apparently there was, I see the snaps here. There must have been like a canopy or something that came out over these windows. I'm not sure if these um, came out, like tilted out these windows. I know these do. And I'm guessing maybe these did. I can see they put screws in this right here. So they probably did. Yeah, that's going to be hard to replace them pretty sure um i'm guessing i don't know if this is where the stove went or not on this side that's what that's for or what that's for right there because we've got a vent right here that goes up yeah that's a spidery mess up in there and I was looking I'm sure everybody that knows anything about Airstreams already knew this but I was just kind of tapping on this the other day and I'm like that sounds like that's metal and I took my knife and scraped it these are all aluminum panels in here as well so I get the pleasure of putting paint remover on all of these and um stripping these down too because i'm gonna strip these down and polish these out as well yeah that's gonna be fun but it, it actually should be a little easier um i'm only gonna remove the panels where there's dents at that i need to knock out because this is just a tremendous amount of rivets i mean hell there's probably a hundred rivets and this little four foot piece right here. So yeah, I'll just be removing like that upper section there, the back corner back there. And yeah, this thing's still loaded. I mean, if you can name it, it's in here. There's lizards everywhere. Um, if you didn't hear before, this belonged to the mayor of Lizard Lake, North Carolina. It's kind of where he stored his yard sale stuff. Dead, he never got around to yard selling. And there's everything from piano benches to there's a PV amplifier down here. A bunch of PA speakers back there. Uh, projectors and projectors and more projectors. And there's another projector. And... There's a gas pump, and here's a gumball machine with a telephone on it. Hello? Hello? They hung up. Okay. There's a little TV back there. I like them little portable TVs. About three or four VCRs in here. There's one of the very first VCRs ever made in here. Let's see if I can get to this. 
right here. This bad boy weighs at least 100 pounds. It is a Sony... Um, I looked, I couldn't find a number on it, but the tapes are freaking gargantuan. See if I can get the damn thing out. Uh, it won't let go of it. But, I mean, they're way bigger than a regular VHS. I mean, it almost looks like to me something you would see at a studio for editing video and all. Because, I mean, it's thicker than a regular VHS. Let me see if i got one I can hold up to it. Here we go. Right here. You can see it's thicker than a regular VHS. It's way longer. It's deeper. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I've looked online at ones like this. And they're going for between like 300 and 500 bucks. I don't know. I, I want to make sure it works. Okay. Another projector. Old cash register. Yes, there's a lot going on in here. There's a trophy for winning the uh, lizard race at Lizard Lick, North Carolina in 1976. Okay, and here's a, if you can see it back there, the kind of purple dragon, if I'm not mistaken, that Spyro, I don't know if many of y'all that will remember that video game, the debut of that game was actually in Lizard Lake, North Carolina, it was a really big deal back then, I mean it was a huge amount of press, and all they pretty much shut down the road going through Lizard Lake. And had this huge festival and all that and it was a big deal it was right about that time that uh they started pitching the like lizard lick towing and all and got that going and charles was also pitching another show i've got the paperwork here it was um vh1 that was supposed to pick it up and um Oh, whatever happened, it never did get picked up. It was supposed to be celebrities doing um, kind of odd jobs. Like somebody was going to be working for a tow truck company. Um, like somebody else cleaning houses. Things like that. But um, yeah, never got picked up. All right. But yeah, that, that's how it came out with stripping the paint. I think it's for a first run with a $5 thing of brake fluid instead of a $60 thing of uh, paint stripper. And I mean, the thing that I was looking at was literally like two of these, maybe three. And uh, it was $60. This was $5 and some change. If I had it done what it said on the paint stripper and left it here for four hours i think it would have took every bit of it off but i'm kind of impatient and i wanted to see what was going on with it and now i know it's going to work so i'm going to pick up like three more of these and get the rest of it done the next day that i know it's not going to be any rain so i know it can sit on here all day but yeah this corner here Hell, I want to start polishing on this corner. Right in here. I got no dents or anything to worry about there. Yeah, I want to start cleaning that up. Got a little one right there. I ain't worried about that, though. All right. Well, later, everybody.